Hey guys, Jay Tyler here. I was out of town this week. I'm a little late getting my video podcast out, but I'm back, so here we go. A couple of weeks ago, I was a guest on Cade Tippett's Live Wire Wednesday streaming video podcast, and we talked about springs, and Cade bent several types of springs, and we discussed them. And we also talked a little bit about the spring aligner, and I showed a design that I picked up from another lab years ago. So let's go talk about that. Here's a couple of old spring aligners I've had around the lab for a long, long time. I got this design from a lab called TP Orthodontics in Indiana, and I got this many, many years ago, and I've used it almost exclusively since. Uh, typically, when I see a spring aligner design, it'll have the wire go across the interiors to capture that lingual acrylic pad, and then it'll curve back kind of like a mushroom shape, and the two ends will come together at the midline They'll go down into the acrylic and then the lingual slot is cut up to it, so it makes it kind of flexible, but it's not nearly as flexible as something like this. This is a recurve right here, and it adds a whole lot of flexibility to that lingual component. I've even seen these with a helix, you know, a couple of helixes to make it even more resilient. Uh, the label is usually the same, um, palatal acrylic. I usually put a couple ball clasps on here on the upper. Uh, here's the model. Uh, it looks like somebody made an Essex retainer on it, and then I made a um, spring aligner in addition to that. But anyway, the, I usually put ball clasps between the second bias and the molars, and oh, I haven't dug out here, so it's not wanting to seat all the way down. But anyway, you see what I'm talking about. Got the lingual pad here, whole lot of flexibility. Now I can reach under here and just bend that way up, real flexible. Very nice design. All right, on the lower. It doesn't have acrylic down here, and that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, it makes it real sturdy. Uh, no acrylic to break down here. You do have acrylic, of course, on the lingual of the interiors. You get that recurve spring, and I use about an 040 uh, stainless steel wire, or I mean a spring tempered wire here to connect the two posterior acrylic pads. This is real springy, more so than the mushroom shape with the little wires going down even with a support wire on that lingual acrylic that's usually inferior to this acrylic pad uh, on the incisors that will still sometimes, you know, break. But without that, with this wire right here, you don't have that problem at all. And once again, I've seen a, a helix back here. I've seen the helix right here. I've seen helix here and here. <laughs> so there's all kinds of designs to make it even more flexible than it is. Now on the lower, unless there's no natural undercut, which this case has some natural undercut. If there's no natural undercut, I'll put some ball clasps in here, just like on the upper. But on the lower, if it has natural undercut, I will um, not put the clasps on there. Now here I've done the interior setup. I usually duplicate the model and then make the appliance and then put it back on the original. So there you go. This is an old appliance. You can tell it's kind of getting discolored here on the wire. <laughs> been around for a long long time but that's that design that makes a very flexible spring liner all right that's it i'll see you next time